Hello my dears, my name is Mariana and welcome to my channel. It's a slightly different setup today, so that's fun. It's also pouring outside, so hopefully that does not uh, ruin all the audio, but you know, we're gonna run with it either way. It's fine, it's hot, it's humid, we're going for it. So we all love a good reading list. So I figured what we do today is explore some books that I've read that I think are really excellent portals into depth psychology and specifically Jungian psychology. These are my faves for not only understanding Jungian psychology, but actually learning how to practice it, how to do the inner work of depth psychology. So there's a bunch out there, but these are my picks. These are books I have read, I have vetted, and I believe in. If you have a book you think should be on the list, please let me know. Put a comment down there and, and tell me about it because maybe I've never heard of it. Of course, if you haven't already, go follow me on Instagram and definitely make sure you are subscribed so you get more videos like this and more book recommendations. Because if you can't tell if there's one thing I know, it's books. All right, so without further ado, let's get into some books. <laughs> so the first book on my list is probably the least known of the books. And this is Boundaries of the Soul by June Singer. This is probably one of the first Jungian books I ever read. And she's, she's hefty. There's over 400 pages in this book, so it's a lot, it covers a lot. But as the title says, it is the practice of Jung psychology. It is about putting this inner work, this depth psychological work into a daily practice that is extremely doable. She talks about archetypes, she talks about dreams, she talks about active imagination. She gets into complexes and she even gets into religion, which is a topic that a lot of us stay away from a little bit, but she really takes it up, she really works through it and it's, it's really, a powerful resource. June Singer keeps everything kind of personal, so she talks to you like she's a real person, which I love. And though it's thick and long and intense, it's actually excellent, honestly. I love how she spends some time on persona and shadow and really talks about relationships, the relationships we have with other people, how projections work. It's all excellent. And if you take your time with it, this is probably my highest rated recommendation for beginner Jungian books because it covers everything, but it also is extremely readable and extremely engaging. So this is a good one. Next on my list is probably the most popular of the Jungian resources, and that is Inner Work by Robert Johnson. This is a classic, it's a standard, it's a must have. It's a lot shorter, as you can see, a lot more readable. What's different about this book is that it really focuses in on dreams and active imagination. And the reason is that these are the two places that we can actually get into the meat of doing that inner work. And it's not so theoretical, it's practical. So in inner work, Robert Johnson does an excellent job of making it as simple as possible. He gives you examples of dreams. He gives you, his, he gives you, a, wow, he gives you, he gives you, I'm having a problem. He gives you examples of dreams and how to interpret them, what associations are, amplifications are, all of the good stuff you need to know. And actually Robert Johnson is a very well-known name in the depth psychological Jungian community. He has other books about shadow work, which I haven't actually gotten into myself, but is on my list. I will read it and I'm sure it's excellent. He also has the books of he, she, and we, all separate books about feminine psychology, masculine psychology, and collective psychology. He is amazing. He is so approachable and he's perfect for the absolute beginner who is really, really just getting their toes wet in Jungian stuff and depth psychology. So this one is very practical and a must read, absolutely. Hey! Pandora is beating Mowgli up. I swear, I can't. Okay, so next on my list is a book by Jung himself. This is Man and His Symbols by Carl Jung. This is my special version that has illustrations and I love it and it's my favorite. Beautiful. This is the go-to. This one is basically the accumulation of Jung's psychology in his own words. 
It was specifically written for people who didn't know much about his psychology, who were just trying to learn about it. So it's geared toward the novice. This book is a little bit more psychological. So it talks more about the unconscious. It talks a lot about individuation, about archetypes, about complexes and typological functions. It gets a little bit more into the meat of Jungian psychology, acts a little bit more like a textbook. But it has everything you need and if you're the kind of person who likes to read the author's own work and you don't like interpretations then you should get this whenever somebody asks me for a book that summarizes jungian psychology i tell them this one it's not the most readable thing ever jung in general is not the most readable thing ever but it is comprehensive it is in-depth and it is really fascinating so if you can get the illustrated one even better because that really enhances all the extraordinary things they're talking about. We're moving right along. I love a quick video. So next is probably the most difficult book, but by far my favorite. That says something about me, doesn't it? This is The Pregnant Virgin by Marion Woodman. Now I would say probably anything by Marion Woodman is a go-to, get into it, you're gonna love it. Mowgli's beating his reflection up right now. Mowgli, you don't need to, it's you. But the thing about The Pregnant Virgin is that it is so deep and so wise that it's, it's really astonishing. Why are you hissing at yourself? This book is about the work of psychological transformation. So it's the least practical and most kind of esoteric, but it just always gets you right in the heart of exactly what you need to hear. I remember the first time I read this book, I think I was like 25, and I was just stunned. I was stunned. I, I couldn't even process it for a while. This book is particularly rich for women. Marion Woodbin often wrote about the feminine experience, the female experience, and archetypes of femininity, and so she has a lot of those components in this book too. But it really explores the process of change, the process of transformation. She dives into what it is to enter the chrysalis, enter the cocoon, and then emerge transformed, metamorphosized. Metamorphosed? Metamorphosized. Metamorphed. I don't know. Changed. You come out changed. It's a really powerful book. It works a lot with mythology, which Marion Woodman is so good at. And I think if you're looking at Jungian psychology, not just to learn more about yourself, but to really change, if you feel yourself on the precipice of a transformation, get this book, trust me. You might need to put it down a couple times because it'll be too real. <laughs> yep, that's, that's, that's a thing, but it, it probably will change your life, so can't recommend it enough. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, The Undiscovered Self. I have mentioned this book a few times on this channel because it is the one. That's it, that's the answer. End of story. This is the first book I ever read by Jung and after I read it, my life was never the same. This book is not about Jungian psychology. It is not about how to do the inner work. It's not about any of those things. This book is about you. It is about discovering yourself inside the collective. It is about the work of individuation. It is a very short, very readable book. And anytime someone asks me where to start with Jung, I always say the undiscovered self. And I know a moment ago I said, go read Man and His Symbols. And yes, go read that. But that is for the people who really want to get the whole picture of Jungian psychology. If you just want to get the taste, the, the entry point into the wonder that can be the psychology of soul, which is absolutely what I believe Jungian psychology is, start here. This book is really a response to the post-World War II era, to that burgeoning Cold War era. It is about finding yourself in the mass of the collective. It is about really understanding what it means to be an individual and the responsibility of individuating. It's just so good and so fascinating and so philosophical and so deep and interesting and wonderful. And I, I gush, I'm sorry. <laughs> And you know what? You might not even agree with everything that Jung says. And that's what makes this even better because it is so stimulating and interesting that it really gets your own mind working. It really encourages you to develop your own philosophies of self. So please do you a favor, do me a favor, read The Undiscovered Self by Jung. You won't regret it. Okay, my friends. So that's it. That was the list of five books to start when you're trying to start some Jungian inner work. 
I hope that you got something out of this. I hope you read one of these books or all of these books. Please let me know in the comments. I appreciate you being here. And if you haven't, go subscribe. If you haven't, go follow me on Instagram. And I'd love to know what books you read to start with Jung. I am so fascinated by how people get into Jungian psychology and depth psychology. So if you started on a different track and you didn't come through one of these books, please let me know what it was. I really wanna know. So that's all. Have a beautiful, meaningful day, my friends. Two days ago, Pandora um, executed a plan that she had planned, actively planned in her brain, uh, that when I came home, she would dart out the apartment. And this is a recurring nightmare I've had since I was probably seven years old. So obviously I had a complete panic attack, but she ran out so fast that she scared herself to death and ran right back in. So it's pretty adorable actually.